week, I thought I would do a fast project and get my, get something, get that immediate satisfaction <laughs> feeling. Um, so I'm gonna make this guy a little bit longer. Let me just pan out a bit. Um, a longer blanket for in here. Um, he's a little too big for this little blanket. I made this last year and I like to throw these in the wash. It's just easier to care for them that way. And I hang them to dry, but this one felted quite a bit. So it shrunk, shrunk up. So I am working on, let me show you. I'm working on a, a, a wider and longer um, version of this blanket. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna make this one nice and long so it'll cover more distance and um, I'll fold it in half just like that other one is folded. I think I actually might wash it first before I even, like wash it in the washing machine before I even have him use it, but it's been pretty fun. I love doing these scrappy projects because it um, uses up all the little dribs and drabs. So I have a lot of, um, you know, leftover blues and greens and shades of blue and green. And I'm, I'm working in some really thick mohair in this one too. Um, I've talked about these before last year when I made them, but it's basically holding six strands or sorry, 10 strands, <laughs> 10 strands of fingering weight. And then if I have a strand of um, DK, which I think this one is right here. I just count that as two. Somewhere in that 10 to 12 strand. Um, so I think I actually have 10 strands right now. And this mohair is a DK weight. So yeah, that is what I've been working on the past day or so. He knits so fast. I should have this done in another day at the most. <laughs> Nothing like showing you the finished object at the end. <laughs> I just recorded the whole episode, but now I can show you because um, my little guy is uh, no longer sleeping on it. So yeah, here here's the finished object, the cat blanket, um, the one by one rib stitch with a US size 17 needle, holding 10 strands of fingering weight together or the equivalent thereof. Like if I had a strand of worsted or DK, I counted that as two. Um, yeah, so uh, I think I talked about it in the intro where I, um, I've i made a few of these for my cats to sleep on and I because they sleep on them, I like to wash them regularly and as I wash them, they tend to kind of felt. I had one small turquoise one that you saw in the intro clip um, that has shrunk quite a lot. It was not as long as this, but it was definitely as wide. Oh, that's really interesting. I didn't notice that pooling happening right there um, before, but it was definitely as wide and it got quite narrow and tight like from felting, but it's still, it's a perfect size for um, this one piece of the cat tree that they like to lay on. So this way I can just like pick it up and throw it in the wash and I don't have to worry about, you know, fur getting matted or dirt or whatever stuck there. Um, but yeah, anyway, here you go. These are very fun. I think I already talked about this before. Work, they work up very fast because you're knitting on US size 17 or 12 millimeter needles. And I, for this, I cast on 35 stitches. I like to do an odd number so that the edges look the same. And what else can I tell you? I think that's about it. Just basic cast on, cast off, lots of ends. Um, you can just try, you don't have to worry about weaving the ends in, you can just cut them. Um, because it's a scrappy blanket where I used a lot of like, you know, leftover scraps and um, even partial, like tiny bits, like just a few yards, just knit it right in. Um, you end up with a pretty uniform color even though you're changing yarns all the time. can see there. I did hold two two skein I had two full skeins that I went ahead and used. I didn't use them all. I used up all of one because it was not it was like a 200 
300 yards skein. The other one was bigger um, that I, and I didn't use it all up. I used up a lot of it, but not all of it. Um, I've made these two, if you were here last year, I was really keen to use up a lot of my scrappy uh, stash because I had quite a lot of scrappy stash, like partial skeins and stuff like that. Um, so I made several of these and I gave them away to my children. I think I made four of them total or three of them. Um, so I made like human size ones too, which you, if you're interested in doing that, the recipe is in my Ravelry. I didn't use a pattern for either of these. It's in my Ravelry um, project page. You can just go look at my Ravelry um, page. And if you're not on Ravelry, just uh, down in the comments, ask me and I'll, I'll share the recipe. Um, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. And you can kind of just make it up <laughs> as you go. Um, but do be aware that they do felt if you uh, launder them in the machine. So just make it extra big. They, they knit fast anyway. They're just hard to port around, carry around if you're making a human size one. And that is that. Hi. How are you today? My name is Shannon. Welcome to my Knitter's Life series, season four, episode five, I think, six, one of those. Can't remember. <laughs> I just don't. If I looked at my notes from last time, I would know that. But, you know, whatever. There's so much um, that goes on that, you know, to start just to sit down and record, like so much setup that. I forget the little things. Anyway, I hope you're doing well. Thank you for coming, stopping by and hanging out with me for a little bit today. Um, I am going to catch you up on my knit projects and you just you just saw my finished object. Um, I wanted to, I've actually, I pulled this sweater out. This is an old whip that, let's see what I, when I finished it in, I finished it in 2021. So this is a three-year-old whip. This is the, I'm wearing the Center Point Popover by Anura Berkumbaeva. It's funny, I was thinking about this sweater and I was thinking that I don't wear it all that much. And the reason is that it has this weird <laughs> armhole thing going on. I was thinking this morning, like I might reclaim this yarn because this is really gorgeous yarn it is a rainbow you can really see the rainbow in the weight so this sweater is started in the middle um, and you knit in a circular fashion actually on the front you go back and forth so you can kind of see like the the yarn started here and then it the color goes out that way um yeah, I just don't wear this very much, and I think it's mostly because it's short. Um, it's a, it's kind of a crop sweater, and I don't know. When I reach for a sweater, I want it to be long. <laughs> I want it to at least cover my stomach. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's me. <laughs> um, anyway, I saw on this designer's web or Instagram that she's no longer designing and she has just actually stopped knitting which I was just like oh wow that's that's crazy um I mean whatever she has her reasons so yeah that's what I'm wearing um has a hood I might if I rip it out I think I'll make I may make like the traveler hoodie or something with it something that I can control and make longer and I think when I did make this I tried to make it as long as I could I had a lot of modifications um, it's too bad because it's really cute but I don't know that's just like what I thought of at the moment <laughs> so it might not actually happen <laughs> who knows um, yeah anyway you saw my finished objects. I want really, really so badly wanted to have one of my three sweaters that I have on the needles right now um, finished for today. It just didn't happen. I am so, so close um, to starting sleeves on all three of my whips. Um, let me start with the oldest one first. This one I cast on on New Year's Day. So this has been on the needles for quite some time. It's almost April Fool's. So three 
three months. I don't think I'll finish it before April 1st, but who knows? Um, I ran into a bit of a snafu, which I'll tell you in a minute. So let me just tell you what it is. If you're, in case this is your first time here and you don't know what the hell I'm talking about <laughs> in terms of my whips and yada, yada, yada. Um, this is Scottish Check by Marianne Isayer. I got it. I, every every other episode, I tend to remember to pull out the book. It's from this book right here, A Knitting Life, um, that I purchased last fall. I think it came out last fall. But this is what the sweater looks like. It's like a bo boxy sweater um, knit in a mosaic color work um, out of sheepy yarns. With uh, and with the white, you are holding a strand of mohair with it, and the black you're not, which I love. Very interesting way to construct a garment. Um, when I last showed you, I had the part, the front partially back. It was really the back. <laughs> I just had it front facing, um, partially done. I've now completed the back, so this is the back. I And last time I talked about uh, doing short row shaping for the shoulder line, so I've done that. Um, and this is the back neck right here between these two stitch markers. Um, and so what I'll, I left those stitches live. The, the instructions, I think the instructions on the pattern from the book she doesn't have you, she just has you knit straight up and then leave everything straight across. And I wanted to put in a shoulder slope. And I think then you put all those stitches on hold. Um, and then you, you do three needle bind off when you finish the front. Um, so I'll be making the front shoulder match this. I'm actually pretty close to that part on the front. You can see how close I am. It's literally two repeats. See, two repeats, two, or actually one repeat, two, two cubes, two rows of cube, cubes, and then I can do that part, start the shoulder slope, and then um, the front neck, shaping the front neck. Um, and with this, because it's a bottom up, what you do um, with the front, when you get to where you're going to do the shoulder slope, you are also binding off in the center for the front neck. And then you're, you know, working one side and then the other. Um, so it's it's pretty quick. Like once I get to that por part, I just knit straight through. Like, you know, don't put the project down. Just keep going until that part is done and it doesn't take too long. Um, so after that, I will be um, binding the shoulders together and then casting on the sleeves and knitting those. They knit um, from the top down. Um, I did also modify this in that I knit the body in the round instead of in pieces because that just works better for me. And um, yeah, that's about, that's about it. And I'll be knitting the sleeves in the round down. And you're, you're meant, the pattern is designed to knit it top down, knit those sleeves top down, um, but knit flat and then you seam up the sides, but I decided to not do, I wanted to do a seam, most as seamless as possible version as I could. But yeah, I love this. I love the uh, simplicity of the pattern. Um, it is mosaic. If you're not familiar with mosaic knitting, that means you're doing, um, you're only holding one color as you knit. So you knit two rows with one color and then two rows with the other and you're slipping uh, the other color to get the pattern the way it is. So why isn't this, <laughs> why am I not further? I know you're not asking that, but I would have been further on this. I probably would have been on the sleeves for sure or maybe even had the sleeves, like at least one sleeve done. Um, but I ran out of mohair. <laughs> I thought I had, um, I've been knitting with the uh, Ito Sensei. Just had my hand on the thing and put it down. Ito S Sensei, which is a 60-40 um, mohair silk blend in the colorway white. And I thought I had three skeins of it, or two and a half, or two and three quarter skeins, but I only had one and three quarter. And I do have another partial skein of a different brand of mohair. 
Um, but I ran out of the mohair on the front about um, two of these grid lines back. So the change in mohair, though it wouldn't have been all that distinguishable, had it been distinguishable, I would have a line like straight across my front, which I just thought was not not good. Um, so I I just put the project aside while I waited for, I ordered some another skein of Ito from a local, to me, pretty close to me, yarn shop. And uh, it arrived. It took like five, six days for it to get here. It's funny, you know, I live in northern New Jersey. I live right next to the Hudson River, right across from New York City. And whenever I order anything from a shop in New Jersey, it just seems like it takes so much longer than something if I ordered it from like, I don't know, Maine or <laughs> Texas or wherever, somewhere else. It just seems like mail's more efficient over long distances than over short distances. Um, anyway, so yeah, it took a while for the yarn to get here. And when it finally did, I got back into it, but that's only been like a day or two, a couple days ago. So yeah, um, so yeah, I worked on my other projects instead. Um, that is Scottish Check. I don't think I have anything else to tell you about that. Um, let me talk about what Martha's wearing. This is my second oldest whip. Martha is wearing the Milton cardigan. I am so close to the bottom of this too, but these rows are hella long. <laughs> like, I don't even know how many stitches. I should go look, but I would, I think I'm knitting almost 400 stitches and it's very slow knitting these sections of mohair. So this is Milton by Hohi Locatelli. It is a long cardigan. Oh yeah, you can see the whole thing pretty well. Um, and I think when it gets blocked, it'll be like this. But I do have um, about two sections, two more, two more, like, <laughs> what am I trying to say? Four more stripes of two wool, two mohair. Then I do a section of ribbing at the bottom. Um, and this will be the length that Hohe's is. Um, she's just a tiny bit taller than I am like an inch, so um, I was gonna modify the length and maybe not make it quite as long, but now that I'm here, I kinda, I kinda like it. So um, Martha is a dress form that is my size, but just so you can see the profile. So there's the booty, right, right here. <laughs> and it covers it right now. So it'll be, I mean, that's what I wanted. Like I didn't want it to end like right at that fullest point. So all good. Um, okay, so the yarn here, this is also some hand spun that I made, I spun at the beginning of 2023 from a December, 2022 countdown calendar that I got from Green Goat Ranch. And I was thinking, I'm gonna let me take this off of here. This is my project bag, just to keep the cats from eating the yarn when it's sitting on the floor. Um, and I'm not, you know, paying attention. Um, so the yarn is called Beach Rainbow. It was a Beach Rainbow set. Um, and the idea I wanted to show, I wanted to spin her around. Spin Martha around you could see the backside. So I could explain the rainbow because I realized like in all the times that you've seen the sweater, I really have, if you've, if you're, if you're a returning viewer, um, I really haven't explained the rainbow very well. And the way that Sarah from Green Goat Ranch did the rainbow, if I'm not mistaken, and if, if I am mistaken, she usually watches and she will talk about it. Um, down in the comments. Okay, so I grabbed my uh, color wheel to explain this because I think it's it's better. But each color that she, each of the six colors actually had two colors in it. So it would be like yellow with violet, which you're seeing right down here. Yellow with violet. Or um, orange with, uh, with blue, which would be right here. Um, red with green. And then here's Here's uh, purple, violet with yellow. So it's kind of a rainbow in both directions, um, interestingly enough. Um, and here's like blue with 
with orange and yeah so she she changed the color slightly so that in in each of the pairings they would be a little bit different so you can see like there's a little this is like a stronger orange and blue versus like this more subtle orange and blue so that's the way the rainbow is working so if you were a little confused if you've been a little confused about how is this rainbow yeah you can see it's many colors but um that's how it's rainbow anyway now i've now I've explained it. I hope it. I hope it. Uh, it works. I hope that worked for you. So anyway, I knit using. I made three skeins of that yarn, and I had about twelve hundred yards. I want to say or so. Um, and this pattern doesn't need it all. It doesn't need that much yardage. So I used one skein to do the collar and and the right front, and then. I put that skein aside to do sleeves and I picked up another color, um, another skein rather, and knit the back, the left front, and then everything else down to about, down to the this purple and yellow that you're seeing here, that was the end of the skein. And then um, I cast on and or picked up a, my third skein and started with the neck you know with the beginning so and i had i had up all three skeins caked in the same manner um so yeah and then i'm going to i'm going to end up with probably one full maybe a little bit more than one skein left um and i really love what's happening at the top more than i like the bottom part um so i want to keep i want more of that <laughs> so oh what i'll end up with is uh, a couple um, groupings that are these colors here so yeah that is uh, that's the wool and then the oh my god <laughs> I feel really disjointed but I feel like that I think it seems like I feel that way every single time I'm podcasting every si every single time I'm recording where I'm just like feeling like my head is going a million different directions and I um, struggle to organize my thoughts a little bit. Um, so my, my mohair is by La Bina May. I picked it up at Vogue Knitting Live. You can focus anytime, dude. And it is the colorway Heliodore. And her mohair is on the expensive side, but it is also a lot more yardage than most other mohairs. It's 550 yards versus 400 or so yards or four and change 435. So you get another um, 100 yards um, with with uh, Lobby and Amaze yarn. So I'm supposed to just need one skein for this whole thing. And I had a little panic that maybe I didn't have enough yarn. I won't have enough yarn. And I was going to stop and do the sleeves just to make sure. And then I could just like keep going with the body and then whatever it ended up. But then I just thought, you know what? I'm supposed to be able to have enough. So I'm going to just keep going with the body because I, I'm so close to the bottom. Um, I'm just going to finish it off. And then if I do run out on the sleeves, I do have a color of mohair that is the same type, 60-40 very 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 similar color and if it's just like the last little part of the sleeve it's fine no one's gonna notice I don't think anyway um yeah so that is the Milton by Hohi Locatelli let me straighten Martha back up there so you can see her nicely um I have one other no I have two other whips <laughs> I forgot I cast on a small whip um this is the Chiaro Obscuro by Carol Sunday. And I am knitting it out of single skeins. I had a lot of single skeins of Spin Cycle um, that I collected for a few years. And I've been looking at them for a long time. Many of them I did use in projects, but um, this project came along and I was like, ooh, that'd be a great way to use up like eight skeins of random spin cycle skeins that I've picked up. Um, so <laughs> this piece, I have my moments where I am doubtful that this is working. Um, let me just push her back a bit. 
so there's not too much competition for color right now on camera all right here you go i've gotten quite a lot done it actually looks so much better on camera than i think it does in life but uh i am really getting close to finishing the body and then i'll move on to doing the sleeves this is the this as i said this pattern is is designed to use um multiple colors it's actually i think she made a roadmap she made a roadmap for a spin cycle for using one color of spin cycle ghost ranch where you um and you break up the skeins and i am using i actually have two skeins of ghost ranch that are caked for this and you can see it right here there's some and then down at the bottom there's some there and then there's some i think i'm currently knitting with some on this dark section and the idea is that you knit from light to dark so you're supposed to have your lightest colors on top going down to your darkest colors to kind of make this gradient and if you were using like a gradient advent calendar for example like a gradient countdown calendar that had 18 17 18 colors she made you a roadmap for that too um, and I think that would be fun to do. I may do that at some point. I don't know if I will cast that on right after this is done, um, but maybe later on this fall or something, because I have two gradient advents that from years past that I haven't done anything with, so they'd be fun. Um, you could probably do it with fewer too. You could probably do it with like 12 mini skeins or so. I have a feeling you don't use up, if you use 17, you're not using up all of them. But if you were doing 12 or 15, you'd probably use them all up. Um, but yeah, there. <laughs> this is it so far. I was, as I was saying, I'm down to like colors that are pretty dark. Um, I do have a pop of orange left, and I think I think this blue is actually attached. Um, I do have a bit of light blue, and I do have small bits of lighter colors which will go in my sleeves. Um, but mostly what I have are deep dark colors, like kind of like these, um, and this, this is also attached at the moment. So yeah, I went from having a pretty full bag to having a kind of empty bag, but I should have enough, um, yarn. If not, I do have one other well, two other skeins, single skeins of spin cycle. One color I don't really like very much, but it would work in the darker section if I need it. Um, I might actually pull it in because it may give me, it's got some green and red in it, which might be nice for, and gray, which might be nice to break up some of these reds and blues. So I'm down to like a lot of like rusty reddy colors, <laughs> reddish colors, which that's fine, but I really wanted to kind of keep the mixture of colors. I wish I had more gold. I've, I'm out of gold at this point. I did have a lot of gold at the beginning. But yeah, this has been, <coughs> this has been pretty, pretty interesting. It's very addictive to knit, um, which is why I've gotten so much done with this. Um, but I, I find that when I, when I reach a point where I'm kind of questioning <laughs> whether those two colors go together, I put it down like in this section here. I should actually, yes, I should hold it closer for you to really see what's happening. The thing with using multiple colors of Spin Cycle is that the colors do change pretty rapidly. So like this gold down all the way down to that blue, that's all the same skein. It just changed colors as I went. Um, and same with the red, go, going down to that dark red, same, same skein. Um, so they do change colors quickly. And those blue greens, this like bright blue green, that's part of Stay Out of the Forest, which is the other side of that blue green is this bright orange, which I showed you a bit of. Um, and you actually see a bit of in, elsewhere in the sweater. So I do have one more 
hit of <laughs> bright orange that I'll be putting in there because I think I have about six or seven more inches to knit to get the length I need because you see it's just covering the boobs so I've got to get down to like here or so yeah so I've got I've got a ways to go it's fun <laughs> I hope I like hope I like the finished product you know it's so interesting too like I I've been this is like sort of been on my mind for a while about about um, finished finished sweaters and like what gravitates me towards wearing certain sweaters because I have a lot I have a few dozen sweaters um, and I love wearing sweaters so I wear them all the time I've wore, I've loved wearing sweaters my whole life my whole adult life for sure um, and I know for me like when I'm the things that attract me to knit a project aren't necessarily the things that attract me to wear it once it's done. What attracts me to wear it and what I'm trying to kind of hone in on in my future knits is yarn. That is the number one factor for me. I mean, of course, like assuming that it fits and it's a silhouette that I like, but I've got to like the yarn, <laughs> the feel of it. And you know how it feels on my body is probably more important even than color. Um, color is pretty close, but it's generally like how does that yarn feel? So yarn that uh, like if fab if the fabric that I've made doesn't feel good, I'm not gonna wear it, even if it's pretty to look at. I'm just not gonna wear it. I'll be uncomfortable, um, and I don't want to be uncomfortable. So don't do that. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm curious what what makes you wear a sweater? Could you do you care about the fabric? I feel like I'm a little bit of a strange person when it comes to <laughs> when I was thinking about this. I was like, huh, yeah, fabric really really matters. It's like why I bought the Lamb and Kid Todd base because I have a sweater knit out of the Todd base I knit last year, and I freaking love that sweater. And it's not about the way it looks, it's about how it feels. I love the way it feels. It's, um, I think it's a cashmere lace, or la a yak, cashmere yak base. It's very expensive, very, very expensive. Um, so I had splurged on a sweater's quantity for my birthday last month, and I have plans. I've talked about it before. I talked about it a couple episodes back. I'm gonna make the gym sweater by Irene Lynn. And uh, I haven't swatched for it or anything yet because I am like about to be doing six sleeves <laughs> because these sweaters are moving along pretty fast. Um, and yeah, so I've, I've been just like resisting. Cat I really want to cast on something new. I have three um, sweaters, four sweaters actually planned and I've talked about them before. So most of them. Um, before so I don't want to spend time on them now but um, but yeah I that's something that's in, that's important to me and I I'm curious what's important to you with a sweater so please share um, I cast on yet another small project that could be my little ca uh, carry around take to work and walk into meetings with it just like it's nice to have something kind of small so that it um, doesn't you know people don't notice it all that much or they might see what you're doing but they're not it's not this massive sweater or anything like that so I cast on another pair of socks um, using some old stash um, stash that I've had like five years I want to say um, but yeah I'm doing the DRK everyday sock pattern which is kind of my it's my go-to sock pattern I like it quite a lot because I don't feel like the heel, shaping the heel, it's a legal heel, and shaping the heel isn't something that takes very much brain power. So I can do it, it's fairly mindless. It's just a little counting, um, but not, not very much. And I'm sure people who do the heel flap probably find that mindless as well. If you've done enough of them, I'm sure it's mindless. But um, this was mindless right out of the box <laughs> for me. <laughs> so um, I was able to, um, and you, when, you know, when you're getting to the point where you turn the heel, that's very fast. I think no matter what kind of heel you do. Um, so, which does require a lot of like rapid counting. Um, but 
yeah anyway this has become my go-to sock pattern i really also really love the way it fits i have a bit of a thin foot not thin this way but thin thickness wise so finding socks that fit me well uh, is hard and i also have a high arch so this rib knit really works very well for me and i like the dk weight versions of it not so i guess technically this is bear paw except that i've modified you could i really modify the drk everyday sock pattern to suit dk weight and this um three millimeter 2.5 US size three millimeter um, needle, which is my preferred, makes my preferred fabric. Um, so I had done that ahead of Andrea releasing Bear Paw. And then when she released Bear Paw, that's knit on a 3.5 millimeter. And I tried one pair and didn't like the fabric that I got from that. And I ended up tearing those socks out and re-knitting them using the three millimeter sock needle, my go-to sock needle for DK weight socks. So yes, I really, really love it. Um, the yarn is some um, unique plucky knitter that I've divided in half. I made two cakes so that I could hold two strands together because it is fingering weight. That's a heavy fingering weight, but that's great because it just means they're heavy socks. So it's one of these and I got this as a gift. So I don't even know, I don't know the history of plucky really i know plucky lamb and kids owner was a co-owner of plucky at some point um and i bought some old plucky in the past but like from a d stash but i have never really bought their yarn um but yeah anyway it's the snug fingering this is the tag that was on it so i don't have any other info i don't know if this means that it's very old plucky <laughs> because again it was a gift from another knitter who um just thought i might like it and I think the colorway is called Crushed Flowers or something like that. I don't know why it's not on the tag, but I wrote that that way in Ravelry. So anyway, um, should be plenty for a sock because I don't, for I'm making a uh, women's size eight. Um, and for that, like for this version with the three millimeter needles, I cast on 40 stitches or I have 40 stitches in the round for the toe, for the foot and leg. And that works really well. Um, yeah, and I have it in my very ancient Jezebel knitting bag. Um, she's a Canadian project bag and, uh, maker. And yeah, this is for like walking and knitting. Slip it on your arm and knit while you walk, which I do do in warmer weather. I just haven't done it lately because it's been very cold. Um, yeah, we had a tease of spring last week and now this week it's very, very cold. And last night or yesterday, all day yesterday, it poured. It was so stormy and windy in the evening too. And knitting wise, that is it. That's all I've got. I hope next time to have um, this nearly done and Scottish check. I really wanna get Scottish check done. And maybe I'll have a new cast on. That would be lovely. Um, I do have a little bit of spinning I want to share with you. I talked about this project last time. I was prepping it. So you saw the prep. And if I can find that clip, I have a tendency to delete clips once I put them in a, in a video. Um, but if I still have it, I'll show you that as I'm talking right now. Um, but yeah, I finished both skeins of this using uh i have the bag here from hedgehog fibers mystery um fiber bags and what it is came in this bag what it is is this 250 grams of comb top contents vary and then it just goes on to say may include merino silk alpaca sparkle blue face Surrey alpaca, sorry, sorry silk, all that. There was no sorry silk in this. Um, there was some one thing, one section that had glitter, but it was very small. Um, so it may be in there at some point, but, um, but yeah. And I, I realized like the one on top looks paler, but I think it might have just been the way. I think this one I broke up the strips, the fiber strips a little bit more 
Um, so there was, there's more like short stretches of color where this one I didn't bother. This was the second skein I made. I didn't bother. I just, you know, let those long strips be there. So I think that's why you're seeing it. Um, I don't know that I'll, I have no project in mind. This is about a thousand yards. No, it's a little less. I don't want to do math right now. Maybe it's like 900 yards, but it's fingering weight, um, yarn. And um, I don't know, I don't know what it'll be, but I thought it was so pretty. It was certainly a very fun spin. It was fun watching it come together. And my little fuzzball is over here, my little fur ball. Hmm. Hi, buddy. Wondering, I don't know what. He's just very social. So cute. Uh, yep, yeah, so that is spinning. I am going to spin the Kim Dyes Yarn Rainbow Fleece next because it's out <laughs> and getting to my fleece stash is hard. <laughs> well, it's a, it takes some time. I have to unstack and move things around to get to the, them. Um, if you're a spinner, I do have, I am doing a de-stash right now of some fleece. There's nothing wrong with the fleece that I'm de-stashing. It's just colors that I don't, I'm not attracted to. It's mostly like dark reds and purples. Um, so that's on my Ravelry de-stash if you're interested. Um, I was all gung-ho about de-stashing them a month ago and I was gonna do all these things like talk about it on Instagram, but I just didn't bother. And it's so funny, like, I find that when I go to de-stash stuff, and then if it doesn't sell, I find myself, like, taking a second look at it and going, maybe I can use this. Um, because although I don't wear a lot of red or purple, um, I know people that do, so I could make things for them, um, knitworthy people that do. But I just haven't. I haven't, I haven't gotten around to that. I mean, spinning, not that spinning is actually pretty fast. Like I can spin a sweater's quantity in a week, no problem. Um, and that's just spinning an hour or two a day. Um, but so spinning yarn is very, very fast, faster than knitting. But um, it com for me, it comes, to, it comes down to storage, like where I already have a whole lot of yarn, so I tend to try to spin, like I'm more attracted to spinning if there's a purpose, if I have a project in mind for the spin. Um, so, or tour de fleece, I tend to be pretty productive in tour de fleece. So yeah, I, I just am, I lack motivation, I guess. Like I have some, I have motivation enough to make a skein or two every couple weeks, but not I'm not like digging into my stash and or into my fleece stash and just like dying to spin it all because I don't have anything to knit with. Um, yeah, what do you do? I know a lot of spinners who don't ever knit with their yarn. And for me, like I find that I learn so much when I knit with my hand spin, spun yarn. Like this, knitting with this has been a real interesting you know kind of journey like to see the way that the colors where in some places it's very blendy other places it's very stripey you know so it's it really gives you a lot of information when you're getting ready like knitting your with your hand spun when you're getting ready to spin or seeing it knitted you don't have to be the one to knit it but just like having someone else knit it you'd really end up with um information i think that would be useful um that is all i have for you so this is kind of a short episode i did make focaccia last week so i'm going to show you that briefly i don't think it's very long um and i have some a couple cat shenanigans of course as always my um silver boy turned 10 Monday this past Monday he's so cute he's such a curmudgeon it's very funny <laughs> if you want a curmudgeon cat get a British short hair and they're I understand they're all kind of curmudgeon-y <laughs> they don't like to be touched and they don't 
They don't, um, they like to be near you, but not on you. Although he'll come and cuddle with me occasionally. Um, but he definitely likes to be nearby, but he wants to sleep like a few feet away from me. It's really funny. All right, I'm gonna let you go. And I thank you so much for hanging out with me and I hope you're doing well and I hope your crafting is giving you joy and inspiration and all the things. So take care, bye. I'm making focaccia for the first time. Um, this is Masa Focaccia. This is also from New World Sourdough by Brian Ford. I actually, this is my usual um, recipe for plain, like just bread. So when I bake bread, I bake two loaves about once a month. So I don't eat a lot of bread. You wouldn't know that from last week and this week. <laughs> but anyway, first time I'm making it, I already mixed the dough and it's risen. It, it went in the fridge overnight. And now I've done the finger pokes <laughs> all over it. It's on this this um, 13 by nine tray sheet pan. And now I'm going to um, push some cherry tomatoes into it and some um, rosemary and oregano get sprinkled on top along with some salts a little bit of salt and olive oil. Uh, very excited to have this for dinner. This is a much bigger loaf than what I would make normally for just me, but I'm a big proponent of like making more than I can eat and then freezing it. So that's what's going to happen with this. And there, okay. There's the tomatoes. I need two hands to do the rosemary and oregano, but I'll show you. I'll do a little clip of the rosemary and oregano after I get it applied in the salt, and then I'll show you when it comes out of the oven. Try the bread. Let me show you. I just ripped off a piece. Look at the look at the rise. It's so good. I did find that the recipe does not have it um, cook long enough, so I changed it to it says 15 to 20. It really needs 25 to 30 at the temperature that he gave us, which was 420. I actually think I could increase the temperature too. So anyway, I'll let you know how it is. Wow, really delicious. Oh my God, the flavor, it's great. Yum, make some.